honestly, I am not complaining. I'm so glad we got that guy. <laughs> yeah. I think I, T1 wants Berserker back. I, I, oh, I actually yeah. <laughs> would not They're even like be They're looking surprised. at the refund and like, what's the refund policy on this? <laughs> now, here's your hosts, The League Dead, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am the League Dad, and I am so happy today. You know why, guys? Because once again, we are reunited full force with Alistair back in the lineup. We're so glad that he could be here today. Uh, but I also have Kevin and Mitchell, who've been holding it down with me the past couple weeks. Uh, but so excited to have everyone back again. Excited to talk about League. Uh, excited about talk about this past weekend and just all the games and all the action that happened. Uh, but first up, how you guys doing, Kevin? How was your weekend? How's life treating you, my friend? Pretty good. I took a day off. I spent about twenty plus hours playing Xenoblade Three. Came out okay, last week, nice. Or, so <laughs> I had a good time. I, that's literally all I did. Uh, that and just like hung out with my cat, I guess. Nice. All right. Sounds good, man. Like, I think those weekends are honestly, or those days off are honestly the best. I used to do that whenever a, a new NBA Live came out for, uh, you know, Xbox <laughs> or PS, you know, PlayStation and uh, just take the day off and play the whole day. Me and my friends would all take off. And uh, those are the best, man. Some fun times. You don't need to go out. Sports games aren't worth taking time off anymore. Yeah, I know. That's I, this hasn't happened yeah. since like 2004 four for me so i quit a long time ago but i remember the feeling though right like it, that feeling as a gamer you got a game i got nothing to do i'm gonna order food and i'm just gonna play this game until like my hands get numb so uh that's always a fun feeling man happy happy you got to have that mitchell how are you doing my friend how's the the coding boot camp and and everything else man i know you've been working out i can tell you yeah. look at buff <laughs> give uh, us an update man yeah yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, boot camp, I don't really want to talk about. Kind of sucks, but uh, okay. working out is just fun. <laughs> uh, working out has been fun. Um, I'm really sore right now. Um, also, I've been um, Avatar, The Last Airbender. They mm. they're coming out with a movie, so I've been binge watching the entire series again, and it is nice. It is so good, guys. So if you haven't seen it, highly recommend. If you like like Arcane, it's like a little um, less. Um, adult themed but such a good show legend of core is also great but been binging those this fun stuff are you talking about nice. so the, i know there was a movie that came out right before was that good no, that was a live action movie there was okay an animated movie gotcha that is made by the same people it's coming out in like a year oh, and a half oh okay so it's gonna be and different it's gonna then. be legit yeah gotcha. it's gonna be it's gonna be animated it's gonna be good it's not we don't talk about the that's what i was gonna say because i had heard <laughs> not so great that. things about that movie so, so okay we don't, yeah. Well, that's exciting, man. I, I mean, I'm excited to see. I, sh I never really got into that series, but I think it's something I want to check Watch out. It. It's I know. Yeah, so I can see. It's I can so see right good. now. Yeah, yeah, for it. sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And speaking of that, real quick, like, uh, have you guys seen uh, All of Us Are Dead? I don't know if you guys out there are zombie fa fans never heard of, of anything. Mm, I hate zombies. I hate scary stuff. Okay, so I, I love I love zombies or just like apocalyptic survival stuff, and it's a Korean like I feel like Koreans do really good zombie. Uh, movies, shows, uh, if you ever seen Kingdom or Train to Busan, like such good zombie stuff. Mitchell shaking his head. <laughs> I'm probably going to give him nightmares tonight, but that's all right. Uh, but I love it, man. And this one, if you haven't checked it out, Netflix, uh, all of us are dead. It's like a zombie apocalypse, but they're in high school and it's actually really good. Like Koreans do K drama really well also. And they mix that in with zombies. It's, it's an interesting like basket of emotions because you're like scared and then you're like, oh, sad at the same moment. And then there's some funny terrible. parts. It's really Sounds weird. Terrible. It's very demented. I don't know why. I don't know why I do this to myself. But uh, Alistair, how are you doing? It's been a long, uh, a long while since we've seen you. How, how's life treating you? Are you still like back at home? Are you back at in campus? What's up? Yeah, I'm I'm still home. Uh, heading back to campus in about two weeks. OK, uh, sweet. so getting ready for that. That road Ooh. trip in about two, three days. Mm uh just been busy honestly yeah yeah gotcha none special gotcha, gotcha. yeah the reason well, he's the been prodigal son returns that's right that's what i was saying like the the reason he was out because this guy's this guy's working hard got getting a summer job and i'm like man he's being all responsible but either way man yeah, this is much more important 5 a.m yeah waking up at 5 a.m uh, forget that mess man we need terrible. you here on the podcast <laughs> discussing video games. Okay, this is way more important. That's where I want to be. <laughs> this is where he wants to be. Uh, but let's talk about, you know, this past week's action. Uh, I think 
you know, interesting, interesting things uh, happening uh, and the narratives constantly kind of forming and maybe uh, reaffirming some some confirmations that we've been seeing the past few weeks, particularly I'm thinking of like TL not doing well. That's continuing. Uh, CLG making, you know, uh, an argument that they do deserve to be in the top, you know, spots, which is crazy because of how bad they've been in the past couple of years. Uh, it's really crazy to see that. Uh, and then C9 finally catching fire. Uh, EG 100 Thieves. Well, EG's kind of been like we knew they were going to be good. 100 Thieves, uh, they're starting to prove themselves, starting to feel like they're getting in that form. Um, so a lot of stuff really, uh, you know, going on there. So I want to actually do something different. Instead of me picking, well, where we should go, I want Kevin to take the lead on this one and be like, hey, Kevin, out of all the action, you know, what do you want to discuss? Whether it be Team Liquid or, you know, your favorite team or whatever <laughs> it is, man, you have you have the floor right now. Yeah, I mean, so normally I would want to discuss the two O teams. However, I think I've Across the copium horizons, so <laughs> I finally figured it out. I was watching how Bwipo was casting his uh, game after mm. uh, he played, and how he's like super cheery, even though they had lost. As well as just like seeing how he talked about it in interviews. Mm -hmm. I think Liquid just doesn't care about regular season. Like honestly, I, I've been watching. I'm like, they've tried Draven, MF, Kogma, Lulu. Like they're just picking everything. Seraphine bot. Like they just decide whatever they want that week, and like, yeah, let's try it out. I think they give zero shits about um regular season is what it looks like and i can kind of see it uh in the sense that i can kind of see that when you see like the tsm game where they had a super coordinated they had a game plan they dove the shit out of instinct it was mm -hmm. super great and then the next game they try to pick cog lulu which like we've always been saying is good and they play it like ass like yes they're, they're, like there was a criminal elder fight like i think that should be historic i think not enough people are talking about it because c9 won but like that on both ends i'm just like good god what am i watching here how did we get here uh obviously c and i had the advantage of ocean soul point is i think liquid is just phoning it in they're gonna go through playoffs i don't know if they'll be good in playoffs but they're sure as heck are phoning it in right now um so that's my take i'm not saying they're good i'm just saying that they don't care right now and that's not necessarily a good thing <laughs> but you know we've seen g2 do this for split on split i don't know if liquid can get away with it though they're a new team that's the problem yeah definitely can see that yeah, I, I can see the argument, but if you want to be honest, I feel like we've been giving TL the benefit of the doubt for so long and so many years To be now. fair, to and be fair, though, can, Mitchell can, Mitchell has been saying he was going to go hard on Team Liquid this this yeah. split, and he has. But well, yeah, I've been going enough. hard on them yeah. every podcast for a while now. Like, it's been like three or four weeks. I'm like, no, but I think, I think I Alistair's right. Do. I do think Alistair's right. I think a lot of times, though, and it, it does sound like copium. Because it's like saying, yeah, they don't care about regular season. But at what point, like, should they start caring? Because I, mean, I know, there, like, they have the where, switch. Like, not caring. Yeah. There, there's a point where not caring is okay. Like, yeah, trying out a bunch of stuff. Like, that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Like, you're, you're trying new things. Like, there's that. And there's also just playing bad. And that happens, mm -hmm. right? Like, Han Sama, he's just been, he just has not been playing well, like, mechanically in mm -hmm. general. Like, I can understand, like, you're trying new champs, whatever, like you're not going to be perfect at them but he's playing stuff like lucian and ezreal which is all too comfortable on and just like i i know this is a bit outdated but because i haven't been here but like flashing over that wall on lucian <laughs> yeah we talked about that, that yeah that, Ez, <laughs> that ezreal e into a renata ultimate uh, yeah. like there, there's yeah. like uh, that lucian play in that same game where he runs away from his team towards a teleport and then runs back towards his team and now is frontlining yeah. like th these are things that like these aren't plays you do when you're not caring they're plays you do when you're playing bad mm-hmm Right, like it's okay to not care and trying new stuff is completely fine, but you can't say that these mistakes are him not caring. They're just like him messing up, and that happens to everyone. That's true. Go ahead. Yeah, I I agree that they've been playing badly, and I think it's a combination of them also phoning it in. Like Santorin gave that interview last week where he's like, "We don't care if we go nine to nine mm -hmm. and then Whippo does also kind of seem to just not really care, just happy-go-lucky playing his games out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's like you, you're phoning in and you don't care, right? But, like, if you're trying experimenting stuff out, I would like to see, like, a proper game plan, at least. If you mess it up, whatever. Yeah. But it does feel like when they have the Kog'Maw Lulu and you have Ari Wukong and Olaf, and then half of them go in, and then the Lulu's actually with the Bruisers, and the mm -hmm. Kog'Maw just dies by himself, it's like... 
but there was you guys didn't really follow a game plan so like you're trying <laughs> stuff out but did you learn anything yeah because exactly you didn't even play your comp right so what's the data what do you take away not from caring this? and trying stuff out does not work together yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just true. it doesn't work together yeah it doesn't work so i i mean i still think that team liquid like they're gonna be playoff monsters still right they're still gonna be probably up there very competitive to get a world spot it's just what do we have to talk about it's just not fun to watch them when they lose sometimes uh we want them to win every time right yeah. we want them to win all their games honestly like if you're if you're just like a fan of lcs in general like this team should be doing well all the time so I, it's disappointing i i mean i, I don't know what uh, i said it last week right Cordy j kind of looks ass like two and that's just a rare sight to see that well funnily enough bad. Funnily enough, what did I what did I say? I was like, I don't want to see Core on Enchanters anymore. Mm. He plays Rakan, yeah. they win. He plays Lulu, they lose. Okay, so Rakan has engaged. Rakan is the one pulling the trigger, and once again, we see him do well with with the engager, with the one where you know he can make the play happen, and then you know see him in another instance with him being Lulu, like not really being around the right people. Um, you know, it makes a difference, and not to mention that that Baron fight. Or not Baron, uh, it was Dragon. I think it was Elder Dragon, Elder. where they were literally, it was them and C9, and they were stalling for literally 10 hours because nobody on Team Liquid could pull the trigger. And C9, they didn't have the pressure on them. Like, the pressure was on Team Liquid to make something happen. Yeah. And they could mm -hmm. not because I felt like Core JJ just, he didn't have the, the, the trigger to do it. Everybody else, you know, had they had to rely on that and nothing happened, so... Uh, but yeah, Kevin, were you about to say something? Cause I felt like you had a counterpoint. I mean, again, they played a really good game before when they played Rakan the day before, like literally mm -hmm. the day before it was super clean. They just traded the kills on Whippo for instinct <laughs> yeah, over yeah, and yeah. over and played sad, the map man. really well. <laughs> that was, that was just like, <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> funny. Like bullying, dude. That felt like reportable. I, I, for, I know like, that pain. Yeah, that was so like, like full on Dyrus treatment for both of them. Oh, like, yeah. That's the thing that yeah. pisses me off, though, in the sense that, like, they they showed that they can play comps like that and do well and, like, camp. And, like, why would that not have worked in the C9 game? Mm -hmm. It's like, I agree with you. Like, to, to be honest, even though I am saying that they are phoning it in or whatever, a phoned in team of this caliber is to still win games. Yeah. Like, definitely. That they are losing. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, we see, like, you just see G2, you could see when they weren't carrying on their super team level. In the regular season, but they still look like threats. It, it mm -hmm. felt like Team Liquid looked toothless in the games that they phoned it in. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's really bad. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I also like I want to comment again that Santorin looks really lost in Wukong. Like, yes. Such an OP champion that's like pretty easy to play. He looks really He's lost been for a while. He it, uh -huh. like the champion is so broken, right? For a long ass time since MSI, I think before MSI even. And Santorin not looking good at it. I mean, I don't know. Like, Santorin has constantly been one of my favorite players for a while. But he mm -hmm. also came out with a statement that I saw got dissected on Reddit. Where he's basically saying, in that Elder Dragon fight, like, the onus was actually on C9 to make a difference. But then Jensen what? gave another interview also on and that was posted on Reddit saying that we had mid-push in Ocean Soul. That's right. We were fine to just sit there. And so Santorin's comments... I don't know what's going on with him wow. and his PR statements, but they're getting dissected on Reddit. People are not happy. I'm not <laughs> happy about it. I mean, I don't know. Uh, maybe Santorin, he's the type of player that has the ideas, but he's so willing to follow along with his teammates that it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But it, it, it does kind of scare me to hear these things repeatedly from him, right? Yeah. Like, we don't care if we go 9-9. Nine nine. The onus was on them. Even though we, yeah, we, are, we have zero dragons, they have right. four dragons. That didn't make sense. Um, so I I I want them to stop being stupid. Mm -hmm. I know that's a really hard thing to say. Or so fix, complicated like, of a strategy. It's, <laughs> it's I know, but like guys, I don't know, man. Some of the things they do is just <sighs> not that difficult to fix. Yeah. It really isn't. So, you know, it gives you hope also, right? That they can fix it by playoffs times, but like, you know, they also have a new coach this year. That coach used to be the coach of Immortals. Maybe it's his fault. I don't know. Gil Hoto, is it, mm -hmm. right? Maybe yeah, yeah. he's the problem because some of their fundamentals and their macro decisions just like really feel like this doesn't make any sense. Anybody who's spectating, all of us can see the issues. It's like, 
no, you guys are losing. <laughs> yeah. You guys are making the wrong choices here. So, Well, I will I say, I feel like their early game macro is fine. In fact, they get a lot of early leads, but also because, believe it or not, like they're, a lot of their lanes, they they have early leads, uh, whether CS or whatever, because Bjergsen, although not like making star power type plays, he is being consistent. In fact, that's what Jensen said yeah, his biggest yeah. strength was, was Bjergsen being consistent. He doesn't make mistakes. He's going to CS well. He's going to lane well. And Whippo also, you know, doing pretty well, you know, for the most part, if he's not getting camped like a million times, right? So I think they make fine decisions there. To me, it's their late, middle to late game macro and their team fighting, their execution. Like with Core JJ, I feel like at the helm in most of the times uh, before, um, there was a clear direction. Follow Core. But I don't think anybody else has that same kind of thing. I think Whippo to some extent does. I think like he sometimes he does make some oopsies, but a lot of times he does make great and great engages with Gragas, or he has a great, you know, engage with Aatrox and just soaks up a bunch of damage. So I do think that Whippo has somewhat of that go button. But for me, the, the driver's seat still has to be core. I don't think anybody else, Bjergsen, Santorin, um, Hans, they those three especially are more willing to just go then I think they have the capacity to actually make the right call. I mean, just to put it into facts, Team Luka, I said this like four weeks ago, but Team Luka has the best early game stats in the league by yeah. the mm -hmm. line side. They're 1350 yeah. gold up at 15 minutes, and the second highest is 800 for C9. It's like that's coaching early game, game plan, rotations, whatever, all that stuff. Like it is individual skill to some extent and matchups, sure, but like it is, that's the part you can coach. And I, I've always believed. That once it gets past like 30 plus minutes and you're just being idiots, like <laughs> there's only so much your coach can teach. So the BDS is a great example over there in EU. Like it, they, they get leads all the time and they just find magical ways to lose. And I just don't think <laughs> grabs the, the coach of G2 for so long is like that bad. He might not have had all the credit for G2 success, but he's not that bad at coaching. So I, Gilioto, I, I will blame whoever's the drafting coach for some mm -hmm. of those picks, like letting them get through, like letting the stars just ego or just be stupid with their picks and just wasting stage matches. But I'm not going to blame him fully for their late game. I think that late game mm. is solely on like the way they draft it and the way they like ego slash don't know how to play late game without mm. core being at the helm. And yeah. Wibble's not on characters who can do it. Like he, you saw him try to 1v5 on his L office. Like, well, yeah. it's not that's that not blabber. That's uh, not Blabber, no. Not <laughs> yeah, I think when it boils down to he did it, solo kill Fudge though, which was really yeah, cool. he did. No, it's a decent matchup into Gwen. It is. Yeah. People are yeah. blaming the pick, but it's a fine matchup into Gwen. You, he you did his it. part. I think the yeah. in the early game. I think the rest of his team did it. I think he's yeah. still not quite at the. You know what makes Blabber good is he does just he just always seems to know how much damage he could soak and when exactly to go in with Olaf. With uh, I think you know in laning Whippo was fine with Olaf. I think he's actually pretty good at Olaf, but you could tell he was not really there and his team wasn't really there when they were trying to engage because they were just kind of mismatched. Uh, he died too quickly or his team wasn't close enough to, to come help him. So um, definitely some some things going on there. But I did like, you know, I don't mind seeing those picks because like you said, like trying new things, that's great. For me, it's just, I when it all boils down to it, it's like my opinion on, on um, Impact for so long where he'd be phoning it in during the regular season and every season I'm like... Gosh, he sucks. He's down. He's, you know, over the hill and all this stuff. And you guys keep going, playoff impact. I'm like, man, you yeah. just keep saying that over and over. And sure enough, he comes alive every freaking playoff. So I yeah. no longer doubt him. So, but, you know, and to me, you have such veteran players that part of me is like, yes, you know what, Kevin and what you guys are saying is they're phoning it in. They'll be fine in playoffs because if they just revert back to we're going to scale and like just you know, not try anything and just play, you know, like we've always played kind of before. I think they can hang and, you know, probably win most of those games, uh, to be honest. But I think because they are trying new things, because they are trying to, quote unquote, limit tests and, you know, see their see what they can uh, execute. Like, I think that's it, it's hurting them. It's not working. And maybe they just aren't able to do that. Maybe they're only able to stay with that style that they've had. And they're trying to sort that out now. That's my other copium. Maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. I mean, if their spring playoffs wasn't such ass, I would mm -hmm. have so much more faith in this. Like, the problem is impact shows up, right? We haven't seen this group of players. Like, we've seen them individually do it, but we haven't seen any of these, like, three-plus players do it before. Yeah. In playoffs. It's true. In the modern era. Yeah. So as, as a five, they've never all been on, online and on the same page. As a Except five, yeah. they've... I guess lock-in, I guess, but that's about it. Maybe, but that, you know, every... that Yeah, that was so long ago, so maybe, but... um. 
still. It's yeah. uh yeah, they they have a lot to work on. They have a lot to work on. I'm done okay. with Team Liquid, man. They, yeah, whatever. I, I also get out. I'm, I'm done for this week. Yeah, let's. Oh let's my know. god, dude. <laughs> okay, well, so. Uh, okay, so Kevin, thank you for bringing up that that wonderful topic of Team Liquid. Alistair, is there any kind of narrative or storyline you want to, uh, you know, kind of push us forward to uh, for the next one? Um, I mean, I guess we probably guys probably already covered it, but it feels like this split's much more competitive. Hmm. Oh, we did like really we have cover it. kind of we kind of glanced at it where yeah. um, we think I think that all the teams at least are trying. There's yep. no team that's like fully phoning it in. Every team has. Except, attempts to play the game. I don't know. I think Dignitas now is pretty much in. in I the mean, world. they put their academy team in, but they were trying. They were going in and fighting and looking for picks. I was like, "Hey, it's not bad." They're okay. getting out. Okay, I just, fair. I just feel but... like the top six, like all of these teams, like feel like they're actually like competitive for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I would say I minus could win the championship, and I wouldn't really doubt it. At least in the top five. I would say minus EG and Hundred Thieves, then it's close. I think yeah, I think they're EG, kind of in their own spot. Yeah, but, like, but the rest, I agree. CLG, TL, FlyQuest. Like, yep. Interchange yeah. any of those, and I'm like, okay, I could see that. Mm. You know, I think C9 may have kind of branched themselves apart from that. They might be in the they might be in the EG Hundred Thieves or right below it. Because mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've consistently won all of their games, just gone repeatedly 2-0, 2-0. And the quality has steadily improved. Yeah. And this last weekend, the quality massively improved of their wins. So, yeah. Um, C9, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they they beat all of their competition that would be in the third place. They beat TL and FlyQuest, right? So uh, that to me says that they, they stand up. I mean, they beat, uh, they beat TLG like four weeks ago. So Yeah. Yeah. So and, they, and yeah. I, and I'd be interested to revisit the the kind of thought process and conversation around Zven and how he would do on uh, engage right engage supports and we have seen him actually you know play some engage and I, you know I'd, I'd love to hear all your answers but Alistair you pr in particular because I know you wanted to see how you would do with that like what what have you thought about him on like some of his engage engage champions do you think he's he's doing all right how do how how do you feel about uh, him being that kind of role? player on the team at those times uh if you want to be honest i don't think i've seen enough of it to be fully swayed one way or the other i think he's doing fine i mean mm -hmm. he's playing support right it's not that hard but <laughs> i think i'm just gonna say how it is like support's <laughs> the easiest role in the game no, like it's, yeah. it's not that you're wrong it's just funny because we kind of expected that i know we're just saying yeah like <laughs> I, I know, know. Yeah. you don't you look you wouldn't come to me for it if you didn't expect I know, we, what they want. we know this yeah. already yeah that's right funny. like yeah like that, that's what i feel like okay realist it's not like he's role swapping to jungle or yeah, top yeah. lane like he, he's playing the same lane he's just playing the different the other side of the lane like right. he, yeah. like as an AD carry, you know what to expect from your support. So playing, AD, play, being an AD carry and swapping over to support is a very, very easy transition. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, like, there's not too many mechanics you have to learn. You just ha like have to learn how to ward better. But as some, as a lot of AD carries have been playing fasting Senna, like warding's now like not that big a difference, mm -hmm. like big a mm -hmm. change. Um, and I think like I mean, engaging on champions like Leona or Nautilus is not exactly hard it's kind of just hit r or flash and use your q or e respectively yeah i mean i, I yeah he, he hasn't played rakan right no i haven't seen him play guys he's only played uh i think nautilus and alistair i think but yeah oh was it ali oh yeah, yeah. Al, you know ali is just really difficult champ you know <laughs> um, <laughs> i think he played a game of a moo moo Oh, Moo Moo, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah that, 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 I mean, that dude again, fell off it, the meta. It was versus TSM, though, so like... Yeah. Again, it's it's like, it's the same thing. You hit, you throw one spell and then flash and hit R. It's, yeah. It's really, like, it's not like he's playing any of, like, the harder engaged champions like Rakan or Rel. Like, these are very simple, straightforward champions. So, like, I, I think he's doing fine. Um, But once, like... I'll say like he's. I'll, I feel like it's hard to tell if someone's like good or bad until they they're playing something like Thresh, Rakan, Rel. Yeah, I I also think that when your team is dumpstering, it's also really easy to look. That's at also team. very true. Yeah. yeah, especially on support, right? Because supports like really good supports that shine, they're they're they make big plays when they're on the losing team and they mm -hmm. can bring their team back. Uh, 
but I mean, C9 has just been winning all of their games, right? So <laughs> he, he's barely dying. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. There's not much to say about Zven, I feel like, but holy cow. I mean, like Berserker, right? What a crazy weekend by him. He got a pentakill on yeah. Zeri. Don't give him the champion, right? And then the next oh, game he went, he made Callista look like a late game carry. Like that was so insane by that guy. Um, I, I think I mean, it's just him and Danny are just a league of their own in terms of ADCs. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, agree I, with you, uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm yeah. I think I'm in the same boat. Like I I I honestly it's sad that you didn't even say Han Sama in there because that was no. the expectation of him, but it's clear that Danny and uh Berserker are in just a league of their own. Top two ADCs for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh I I guess the last thing about C9 that I want to talk about is uh is Fudge. His uh he was pretty he was pretty fun to to listen to on the cast on the uh, the tri cast. He's really smart too. December Team Liquid. Yeah. He was very entertaining and I was just mm -hmm. like Damn, this this guy that's that's franchise player vibes right there. That's like yes. like if he sticks on C9, that's like he's got the voice, he's got the interviews down, he's got the trash talk, he's got the charisma, and mm -hmm. he's got the skills to back it up. So um really exciting. He's obviously still pretty new, right? He's only been here since last year. Mm -hmm. Um so really exciting to see for the future of NA. Um yeah. I, I'm excited to see more fudge. I hope I hope they do more of these um like put the players on a try cast for an I love game. it. I was just going to say that. I really love that. Yeah. Because the thing is, is like you're getting it from an actual pro perspective. Uh, and so it's yeah. so like for us, especially who, you know, sometimes the casters say very like repetitive, basic things because they got to make it appeal to broad audiences. But for seasoned fans who also play the game a lot, it is nice to hear more of the intricacies and thought processes behind why they're thinking a certain way or building a certain way or playing the wave this certain way and the timings of everything. Like it really as a fan has made me more engaged because I like hearing that. Um, and honestly though, I've only seen, um, yeah, I've only seen Bwipo and Fudge's and they are really knowledgeable and great communicators. So I don't know who else would be willing to do that. But, oh, they did Hooney. And even that, even though he wasn't communicating no, he was as good. great, it was funny. Like, it was fun. It so, was funny, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I, like I the love it. One too, I love it. And yeah. it was still it was still informational and, and helpful, too, because you do provide a different point of view than what us, you know, what we know. And even the analysts, like casters, they don't know yeah. uh, everything like, like they do. So uh, I was yeah. kind of a tangent. But, uh, Kevin, did you have anything on C9? Yeah, I mean, giving credit to Raya, we like complain about like why weren't players on the cast more, and then yeah, like, the players were on the cast is. more right after. Yeah, uh, I will say LEC, I think did it first. I think they did a couple. Like I was watching LEC, and they had uh, who was on it? I know Broxo was on it, and he was really yeah, nice Broxo? to listen to. Oh, that was really fun. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. That he's he's fun. just he's such a good personality for it. <laughs> um, and I think Fudge did a good job as well. You could tell like it was fun to watch. Whippa and then fudge back to back uh, days yeah. on back to back days and just see like how they think about the game. And you could just tell like they're very like they they have a uh, a career after. Oh, hundred like, percent. If they ever wanted to be a kind of creator, yeah. they would kill it. I don't know if they want to, right? But they would definitely do well at it yeah. uh, in terms of charisma and just entertainment value. I hope LCS keeps doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Keeps finding innovative ways to use them, like. Uh, they just bring a lot and not all of them are good. So obviously, you know, you have to pick your fights and stuff, but like sometimes it's fine to just mix it up. We've, we have some of the best casters in the world, but even I would get sick of listening to like the same, like, yeah, the same like freak freakisms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my they God, say. Yeah. like <laughs> they're fun, right? Like once in a while, but like, I, I don't need to hear him like go that hard all the time because yeah, it's yeah. just a little obnoxious. It is. Yeah. Uh, as yeah. far as, uh, send this just to close out the topic for me, at least. I think he's fine. I think it shows he's a lot better than Winsome and or how bad Winsome was. Yeah. Uh, because Berserker is so strong right now, especially when he gets characters he's good at, like Cluster or Zeri, where you like see just like some crazy, crazy displays of skill. And I was just like, Win Winsome was just holding this man back. He was like the weights, the ankle <laughs> weights. Like, how can you be this bad as support, as a support main, right? Um, at least in terms of on stage. Like Winsome might come back and like get better, kind of like Doko did, right? But like at the level he was playing on in his first split, it was so below par. And yeah. then, like, right after, as long as he's not holding back his lane, he, you can see, like, Berserker gets to shine a lot more on average now. Uh, yeah. Just because they don't get crushed in lane as much. That one time he went 0-5 on Lulu, yeah, they got crushed. Weird. Uh, <laughs> but 
uh, as long as the meta doesn't go into super engage, that like hard engage characters like Rakan, I think you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the All thing right. with supports, right, is like support is the easiest role to go pro on and climb with. Like, there, there's an issue where it's so mm. hard for even like e even amateur teams to find like good support players because so many of them can climb so easily. Mm. Because so the of rank doesn't actually mean is. anything. Yeah, like the rank, the rank is fully inflated. Someone a couple months ago did, um, for like a, for their I don't know something for school that for, uh, stats or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but they they did like they looked into it, did a study on it, mm -hmm. and they the average support player was like five hundred LP inflated. Oh wow! Or something yeah. like that. That's a lot of LP. I want that. yeah, that's like, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I would also like it, but it was like, and I went through through this recently, like with my amateur team, where like we're trying to find a support, and we're finding supports that are like three, four hundred LP. Who they're just like they're they're mid diamond players, wow, straight up. Mm -hmm. hey, I had I had a support for the longest time, who I like as I was growing, I helped him grow as well, like to get a lot better, and he's better than these players, who are four hundred, wow. five hundred LP, and, and he's, he's not, like, he, he, yeah, he's not even at that rank yeah. though, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and I'm crazy. not saying this is jelly. I'm 100 percent serious about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting to hear that from like a Oof. someone who's inside like a, the competitive circuit, like the competitive scene, because I'm sure that you know that does happen, right? Like maybe they see something, but it's not actually there because of it's it's masked in some kind of inflation. Like I don't want to make support mains that listen to the show mad, um, like myself, but. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> I still think it's fun. It's a fun role. You can still play it. Uh, no, but no, I, yeah. I, I I do think that it has a lot of impact. So go ahead, Mitchell. I mean, it's yeah, not no. as big a deal in lower elo. It's like it's higher elo where like when it's you can abuse it so much more is mm -hmm. when it becomes yeah. so much easier to climb. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I think if you're a support main and you're listening and you you feel dismayed or you want to get better, honestly, like the game is massive. Like just go play another role for a while. Like I swear, if you play yeah. jungle for a while your support's gonna get so much better like going from a jungler to playing a lot of support it's like dude some of the stuff the map movements and roaming to like having proper roam timings and like understanding wave states is like it's so second nature as a support and like that's mm -hmm. honestly the hardest thing right is roaming properly and not abandoning your adc and, and especially in the early game like that's the most complicated thing that supports really have to do and it's already built in as a jungler and it's honestly already built in as a mid later too yeah. so if you feel like you you are a support who's struggling to understand the game, just go play jungle mid lane for a bit. Like you will very quickly get how easy it is to support, and that the mechanics of the champion. I mean, it just doesn't even compare to jungle. I mean, you don't even really so. need to play like that. Like you could probably get like twenty games on a certain, maybe more than that. But I play. I felt like I've played every single role, and because of that, it's helped every single role I play because yeah. as a support main you you if you like I've jungled before like I, I've always tried to make jungle work for me and then they keep changing it so I get frustrated and move on but having jungle experience like playing support is really fun because I feel like the way that I win is when I play with my jungler and the thing is yeah. most of the time I don't jungle's OP. You, jungle is OP I, I think but also like as a support player you do learn when it's appropriate for you to leave your bot laner and maybe help pressure your jungler into their jungler or help your jungler get priority in a lane so that you can get an objective or or get with your jungler so you can get deep vision like that stuff if you're a support main who's never played jungle that might not occur to you you might just think i need to protect my adc at, at all times when there's so much more you could do and this kind of went on a tangent but i hope it's informational and and you know because i think that's that's really fun like honestly you yeah. play other positions you learn so i, um, I completely agree i mean yeah like, it's really easy to tell the difference between a good support and a bad support mm -hmm. like, there's there's not many things you have to be good at to be a good support and a lot of people and i mean this goes for every role a lot of people don't want to put into the work to actually mm -hmm. be good at what they want to do they just want to play the game yeah, and that's then get true. mad when they don't get good. Like that. But that's a fair if thing. You like, be good, you have yeah, to be good at it. if you have to be yeah. good, it becomes more than a game almost, right? But like yeah. for me, who's like a casual oh, yes, player, like when I when I lose, <laughs> like I've come to the point where I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not because a lot of times I am just playing because I want to have fun. You know, I'm not. I want to climb, but it's not like that that kind of same mentality where I'm like, 
I, I need to get better. I need to get, you know, now I just like, oh, I outplayed that wrong or my mechanics suck. Like I want to get better mechanically and make these flashy plays or whatever. So that I, I agree with you in that point. But um, anyways, uh, thing I, I want to say yeah. on the subject. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say if, if you're a support player and you're salty about any of this, I apologize, but I will <laughs> help you in one way. Go watch, go to Twitch and watch Rocks 908 He is a very good Rocks. support player. Go watch him. He plays a lot of Bard. Very good at it. Uh, is it rocks with, like, like the map is it r-o-c-k-s or yes R-O-I-K-S, r-o-c-k-s 908 r-o-c-k all right yeah, well, shout out to you rocks i love bard he's so yeah. fun oh my i love God. bard too champion and he's again so that champ <laughs> teaches you things as well just because roaming around and stuff but uh <laughs> yeah. it's exactly why it's part of the reason why i recommended him yeah yeah, yeah. shout out shout out to you rocks champion exactly <laughs> all right well let's move on uh that was a side side tangent there we're back to lcs which is fine uh mitchell you have the floor like you know there's okay. a couple more narratives here that we could tackle but well it's up to you where do you want to steer this boat my friend you're the captain <laughs> thank you yeah uh look at me i'm the captain all right anyways um <laughs> FlyQuest. i want to talk about FlyQuest because i'm i'm definitely their biggest fan Mm. Um, they went 0-2 this weekend, which is a big deal. I, I mentioned it earlier that um, C9, they got to beat the teams that they would basically be competing against for their third place spot, right? And C9 came out on top. Um, FlyQuest obviously fell down, and it was rough. It was a rough weekend for them. I don't think they drafted well or played well either. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the C9 game was probably the closest one. It was fine. They, um, they kind of just didn't, they, I just don't think they had scrum practice against Olaf, right? They mm-hmm. kept thinking that they could fight him. You kept seeing people try to chain CC and stun him to hopefully burst him before he could kill everybody. But it doesn't work because he has an ulti that cleanses CC. So, um, I mean, I like the look though, right? They had a Jackson top lane for Philip. He messed up a couple mechanical plays, but hey, I don't mind it, right? He was aggressive. He played with his team and... He, he picked a decent counter in a Gwen, and they got an early kill on it. But um, I, yeah, the team just, they didn't know how to play into Olaf, and they're going to play C9 in playoffs. It's just going to happen, so mm-hmm. you have to know how to play against Olaf, or you need to take it away or ban it. I actually think it seems like it's a Jose Diodo type of champion. It's not as flashy or has as many dashes that he prefers, mm-hmm. but it's a run over the early game and fight a lot and be the main uh, centerpiece of your team comp. So um, that was kind of a bummer for FlyQuest that, you know, it's pretty much they just got, they didn't know how to play against one champion, right? Um, then they obviously gave uh, Berserker a pentakill, not a great <laughs> morale boost, yeah. right? And then the, the second game against EG, um, they they lost the game in draft, literally in phase one, right? So EG, they first picked Azir, and then... FlyQuest countered with a Kali Lee Sin. Like, you just lost drafts. That's over. Yeah, um, I understand that. So, I, I didn't get that at all. I mean, a Kali loses lane to Azir really hard. As someone who's played it, it's just a miserable lane matchup at all stages of the game. If you ever go in, super easy to stream a shuffle away and ulti away. So, um, I don't understand that. And then you just you just pile it on top, right? They drafted four melees into Callista Renata, and it was just doomed from the beginning, right? You could have given FlyQuest... 5,000 more gold in that game. They weren't going to win. Um, and then my last point is that Lee Sin is a, is a bad champion right now. You don't play it because <laughs> he he flashed onto Inspired Wukong. He had ulti up. He had red smite advantage. And he, he it, the, the fight wasn't even close. He Wukong wasn't even had, close. He lost maybe 20% even, of his HP. <laughs> even the casters were like, what? Wait, because they thought it was like, oh, he's going to... Wait, wait a minute. What? Why is he Why is he doing that? It's like, what? It's like, did he know something that we didn't know? Because I was like, yo, no, this is... <laughs> he did not, right? Divine Sunder is a much better item than Gordrinker yeah. in 1v1s. Yeah. And Wukong is just a better champion in every single way uh, compared yeah. to Lee Sin. So, um, yeah, it's just a really bad weekend for FlyQuest. All right. That's my rant. That's my analysis. <laughs> you guys can go ahead and take it away. Nice. All right. <laughs> Kevin, what do you think? FlyQuest, uh, I mean, are you in the same boats? I mean, if we have been talking them up, but they, they went 0-2. So, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, again, you as FlyQuest, the, giving up the Zeri, I think once you give up the Zeri against some of his caliber that and you don't shut it down, which 
you know, it's not actually that easy to do. Anyone's played bot lane before the nurse right now. She's not that good, I, I would say. But uh, before the nurse, like, I, I think they probably thought that Sivir was strong. And I think she is strong. But, like, the Sivir Tark was, like, in my mind, I don't see Sivir Tark, like, really shutting down. Zeri is kind of, like, trying to both scale alongside each other. And, like, maybe there's a universe where a really good Sivir player can make that work because she is a very strong character. But this was not that universe too. Berserker just went off. Um, I I think they picked too much volatile. Like picking the Jax into the Gwen was also super volatile. Like I think it's winnable, right? But it's a very hard matchup until the twelve fifteen nerf to Gwen. Like I think Gwen's just gonna still have the slight edge there because it's Gwen. Um, Broken champion. But yeah. besides that, I think C nine just played better. They gave up. They gave up Olaf. They gave up Gwen, and then or they gave up Olaf, and they gave up. Zary, and it's like, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, so, yeah. that's true. It, maybe FlyQuest is like trying to test this so that when they do inevitably get into a best of five, what can we give up? What can't we give up? And in that case, that's I a good point. Smart, because right? if I mean, you honestly, might as well... it's top eight gets playoffs and they're not top two. So exactly. Like, What's the point? Yeah, test it What's out. What's the point, right? Why do we show all of our cards you, and if you... they're trying to test it? Okay, to be fair, though, we're getting to the end of the regular season. You want to be third seed over fourth seed, though. 100%. Because yeah. you don't want to play against EG. <laughs> no one wants to play against EG in the first round, uh, in my opinion, and potentially go to lower bracket. So I, I do think that if you're basically not one and two, you, you should be trying to win as many regular season games as you can to avoid playing EG in the first round. Yeah. That's just my yeah. opinion. Maybe FlyQuest doesn't care, and they're saying, hey, if we go down to even fifth or sixth seed, it's fine. But, like, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, just, I mean, yeah. because that is such an easy call. There. That is such an easy call if you want to actually win the game. Don't give Blabber Olaf. Don't give Berserker Zeri. It's not. It's not rocket science on that one. Like I could. I could have told you that one. Uh, <laughs> so let's hope that that was the strategy, Kevin. They were just like, we want to see if we can, you know, handle them on their signature champs. Uh, let's I hope that's what they were thinking. Because that we we gave credit for not being, you know, like stupid, right? They have decent drafts generally. Yeah. And so like, if they're yeah, gonna make they a very obvious misplay like that and then also mm -hmm. pick up some experimental picks like jackson to gwen and uh the new sivir right then in my mind there's like some deliberation behind it now is it correct should you just you know yeah, get a better yeah. seat yeah i think i think mitchell has a point there but they probably weighed that and they're like you know if we win then it's a moral we get a victory in the mm -hmm. best of five um mm -hmm. also i think as of late 100 thieves is just as hot as eg so like they might just literally see it as like uh, mm -hmm. kind of sucks okay. either way yeah. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter if you're third or fourth in their minds, fair. which I think yeah, is you're fair probably also. just expecting a lower bracket run at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Alistair, what are you? What are your thoughts on FlyQuest? I don't really know. I mean, I'm not fully convinced that if we ran this this weekend, or like the, like the I, I'm pretty sure if we play ten times or FlyQuest plays ten times against EG, they lose the vast majority of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. not fully convinced it's the same against Cloud Nine because I do mm -hmm. think. I think it, they'd probably lose more out of 10 games, but I don't think they get blasted. I'd say they probably lose six times, maybe seven. Yeah. Um, I, I think C9's better, but I don't think they're a lot better. And I do think saying, oh, they went 0-2 is really telling the whole story. Because it is against two two of the top three teams that we're considering right now. Like We're saying Cloud9's third best, so they lost a one and three. Yeah. 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 Kind of puts them in like the fourth and, area, and they're also the last team to beat hundred thieves as well. So Ooh, true, yeah, yeah I'm sure. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, um, you know, I think again, like I think you guys all all hit everything. I was thinking of like the drafts didn't make sense, um, but let's hope that's just part of their strategy. I did think like even though their draft was bad against uh, EG. Honestly, I thought it was okay in the beginning. Like, Philip was getting a couple early leads, early kills. I mean, it is on a Sejuani who's, you know, she's going to be impactful no matter what. But even then, like, he ended up dying five times. I think he started the game 2-0 and and was up, like, a bunch of CS. And, like, maybe they could have made something happen with that. But it just seemed like they couldn't do that. And then he was just getting caught randomly, like, a lot. Like, it was, like, one of those typical solo queue games. I got a lead. Now I'm going to go int, you know, int it away. And he, that seemed like what he was doing. He just wasn't aware of where the teams, where the other team was at. I, th I think to Phil's credit, though, in my opinion, when I look at this draft, yeah. he was like the only champion that actually like had not only a winning matchup, but could actually deal with the enemy champions. Like, yeah. 
it it because like he he can throw out non-committal cues and ccs right mm -hmm. where every other champion if they press their abilities they're just fully in there yeah so i i like it's like I mean, the, the comp difference is so massive. The game is over if you don't get massively ahead. I yeah, I don't sure. fault Philip at all for trying, right? Like, he's the only champion that feels like he actually has a chance against the enemy draft, and it's not even that great, right? Like, you, you can't really get on to us here. Well, you, no, but that, that was... Callisto, but... But that was yeah. my point, though, is that uh, he did get ahead early, you know, with the help of yeah. uh, Jose Diodo, but um, the thing is, like, when he did die, I didn't feel like it was because he died in a team fight or anything like that. Like two or three of the times that he died it felt like he was just pushing the wave out too far and just getting Maybe. caught and not yeah. being aware of where you know the other team was where eg was and it happened like i swear like it happened two times in like not for like long after each other um so but like, like that's what i kind of get it those feel like little tiny mistakes where yeah you're you're already at a deficit from the draft perspective but you don't want to give them even more of elite, especially when you you're kind of the only thing that can deal with these these champions. So that was my only criticism of him. Like honestly, like I, I don't think he's great, but I actually don't think he's that bad. Um, you know, I think he I he's he's, he's got a teachable spirit. I think he'll be fine. Um, uh, but that that was just my 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 th the thing that I noticed most with him on that. Um, uh, but I, I do want to move on. Um, uh, we did and it we did kind of talk about it already because it's been peppered in there. Uh, but before I go to the thing that I really want to talk about, <laughs> we'll talk about EG and 100 Thieves first. I know like we peppered them in there, but they're clearly one and two. I think a lot of times because they are so good, especially EG, there's not so much to say other than they're good and they're still good. Even in their loss, you're like, yeah, they just threw that one. They're still good. Um, is there anything y'all want to mention with Evil Geniuses uh, before we move on or even 100 Thieves? Like I said, 100 Thieves for me, I had been saying I didn't know where they were going. But I think lately they're showing me where they're going. They're kind of just playing smart, playing smart. They have made some oopsies, but for the most part, it seems like they're playing disciplined, playing, uh, you know, controlled and playing team fights well and just winning through scaling. That, that's what it looks like to me. So for me, not a lot on EG and 100 Thieves, but, uh, I, you know, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on them. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to mention for both of these guys is I hope they're not just blowing their load in regular season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. This is just like uh, watching Rogue and LEC for a lot of seasons, watching C9 and NA for a lot of seasons. Yeah. It's really common that some teams will really try really hard in regular season, and that's good. I It's entertaining for the viewers and their fans, but I really hope they still have like a plan in playoffs and they can do well, right? I think EG probably has a plan. They like talked about how they, they cooled down a bit after MSI, you know, took it easy, and then, you know, started ramping up. And they're still like doing super well. They're number one, 11 and two. So that's great. I don't know 100 Thieves like that. Mm. They haven't like gotten past the finish line in a while. Uh, wait, is that true? I mean, the they, they won and then they made finals. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind. They did win recently. <laughs> I, I, I totally am wrong there. Uh, yeah. I, I, we'll see how they go. But that's just like, I, I hope I don't get the, the whole rogue treatment where I'm like, oh, this team looks really good. And they go to the playoffs. And then last, last season was EG like sixth place coming out of nowhere and destroying everyone, right? Like... Mm -hmm. Holy moly, it could happen. Uh, I hope it doesn't because I do think we do need the new champions to be consistent enough that people start like really believing in them. I don't want EG to like win one split and then like bomb out another split and people just like totally just retcon all of the achievements JoJo, Pion, and Danny have made this season. Like mm -hmm. it'd be so crazy. Uh, last thing to say about them, uh, Inspired is crazy. He's yeah. Heck I mean, yeah. He played against two bottom teams, sure. So it's easy. To MVP? Crazy, but... Is he MVP? I think so. Uh, I think if you're talking about average, he's definitely MVP. I think there might have been highs from Berserker, but like he came late in the season and like he had some weird games too. I think Inspired yeah. has like shown up almost every game. And as a jungler, that is not easy. On a pro level, yeah. that is not easy. Cannon's like looking terrible right now. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, I also think like if you look back in history, like ADCs almost never get MVP. Like it's just so hard for an ADC to get MVP. It's almost always True. a jungler or a mid laner. Yeah. So. Double if didn't get, he got one MVP and it was like kind of a we yeah, feel bad we haven't given you an MVP <laughs> MVP. Yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah, right? yeah pretty much. Like, I know he, Arrow got one on Phoenix one in like yeah, 2015. That was one oh, of those dang. like uh, like he had a super performance that year. Like well, it was so the, standout that it was like obvious he would get it. Mm -hmm. Well, it was also one of those times where I'm pretty sure Team Liquid was just, I think it was Team Liquid. They're just stealing votes from each other. Like, yeah, because they were so, all they were, they were all very good insane. that season. So <laughs> got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then proceeded to fall off a cliff after. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Sure, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure Poor Double Lift. He he said before that he got robbed when Rush got uh, MVP in like 2015. 
uh, oh. or something when CLG actually won the entire thing. And then also mm -hmm. when Arrow in 20... Oh, it was TSM, I think. It was Arrow in 2017. Doublelift also got robbed when it was like very clearly TSM was just easily the, the best team. So. Well, it, was a, it was a TSM super team on paper. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was TSM everyone's... 2017, I, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, that stuff happens. That stuff yeah. happens, but um, if your name yeah, is I mean, Jensen or or Double, if it's just really hard to get an MVP, I don't know what to tell you. True, it yeah. is. It is. And then Alistair, if your name did is you? Erickson, you just get them all <laughs> or Blabber. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Good gosh, uh, Alistair, did you have any thoughts on uh, Hundred Thieves or or Evil Geniuses? Not. Really I wonder what your thoughts. That, that let me I actually want to get your thoughts on FBI Huhi because that's not a, that's actually not a bot lane we've talked about quite you know quite a lot like. They were easily like the best bot lane, you know, not too long ago, and they've kind of disappeared from that conversation. I think there has been there's a lot of, you know, pretty good bot lanes on paper, uh, I think, you know, in in the LCS right now. But um, I mean, have you noticed anything in particular about them? Like, uh, is there anything you can comment about their their bot lane play? Do, you, do they look pretty average or what are your thoughts on them? I would put them above average. I'd probably say... I'd probably put them at third or fourth. I think, because I think right now the best bot lane is Cloud9's bot lane. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty clear. Other than that, I think you kind of you kind of have TL's bot lane. I mean, as much as I was like shitting on Hansama earlier, like their their lane phase is still very very good together. Mm. Um, obviously, Hundred Thieves is good. Um, and uh, EG, EG, no. yeah, their lane has gotten better. Yeah, yeah, and that that was kind of thing. Still dies randomly. I know. Yeah, and that that's what holds yeah, back. Yeah, he I'd, sure does. I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably put EG fourth just because Danny's landing phase has still yeah. not great. But He's yeah, I'd, I'd probably He's say there's there's they're top three probably, but I don't I, I don't know. I mean, that's most fair. importantly I think, I think, too, I is like that really landing phase is just, screwing up their international. Yeah, mm. I still think they're really good. I just don't think I think other players, other teams have gotten better faster mm -hmm. okay that's just how i put it that's uh, fair yeah my my <clears throat> opinion on fbi and who he is like they went from the pop-off like actual 2v8 bot lane on their team to they're just consistently good and it's really just the someday closer sometimes abadage show like they've yeah. become very consistent about just being solid in lane and being there at the right time at the right place but like Man, it is a far cry from when FBI and Hui were popping the hell off on Golden Guardians and, and last year's Hundred Thieves. Like they mm -hmm. were absolutely dumpstering kids. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a completely but... different style of play for them, though, right? Yeah, it is a, a lot of the champs they're style. playing isn't a lot, a lot of the champs they're playing isn't really like the champs you'd expect to do that. I feel like. Yeah, and and there's the like part. there's there's no TPing bot lane, right? Mm -hmm. Closer is actually having more greedier paths as well. So it's a clear it's it's an intentional shift. Uh, for them, mm -hmm. um, EG, in my opinion, is definitely just like they they like they definitely they have less plans. They have less of a game plan. They have they're definitely scrappier. They they're gonna give more kills and they're gonna give more gold around. But they have that feeling that no other team in the LCS is even close to. It's like doesn't matter how far behind we are. Doesn't matter how bad things look. Doesn't matter how bad a draft diff is. We get that magic energy that we can just win, right? They might lose, right? They might take a bad fight, like yeah. against EG Hundred Thieves. They just take a bad fight over and over again and die and lose. Um, but like they just, that's just best for one, right? This team just has that. We're we're so good individually, and we're better when we're like all firing together. We're we're larger than the sum of our parts. So I mean, I feel like we say this every week, right? Like guys, more hands, less brain. Yeah, I mean, whatever, man. It's the they're, same. they're insane. It's... Danny is more hands, he less brain. Yeah, he could die five times in lane. I don't care, man. In freaking late game, he yep. will carry. He will have Monster. so much stupid amounts of CS and damage. The guy's crazy. The guy's hands are out of this world. Um, and yeah, you know what? Impact's kind of phoning it in. So their games just look a little messy sometimes. But like, Impact is definitely phoning it in, guys. He mm -hmm. is doing some stupid stuff. And you, I feel like if you could see his face cam, he's just got a dumb grin in his face, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> running it top down die. again, boys. He's top yeah, die. Top die. <laughs> Impact die, but no, yeah. like he's just gonna. They're just gonna blast. I'm not out. doubting that man anymore, so that's why I'm not saying no, anything. I, yeah, I, I would neither. jump on I that train, but yeah, I'm not. I yeah, 
I'm good. I don't know. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's all there is to say, right? Both these teams, very different styles, both very good, um, bit different yeah. feelings, of course. But, I mean, I'm excited to see if they clash again in finals, right? What a world we would live in if we had two EG100 Thieves finals yeah. back-to-back in one year, right? That That's just a new era. That, yep. It's just the old kings have gone, the new kings are here, right? Like, that's just... That narrative writes itself. So. No, I disagree. Yeah. It's going to be Fly, FlyQuest uh, CLG finals. I'm down. I'm so down. Okay, well, so, I'm so I mean, down I'm, for that. I'm going to the finals in person. So, I mean, I'm down for whatever permutation yeah. of what we just SF, talked about. SF, I'm... I'm down too. I'm tr- I'm gonna try and go to the finals in, in SF. Oh, wait, are those no, tickets? No, are that's those worlds? That's LCS. That's worlds. Chicago I'm trying to go to the center for LCS. Worlds is not on sale. LCS is on sale. Mm. Is it sold out? Okay. Can't make it. Uh, I mean, I looked about a week ago. It wasn't sold out, but I mean, <gasps> it's been oh, out. Uh, weeks I trust now, me, so. League Dead. It's too late to buy tickets. Dang it! Why would you have to burst yeah. my it, bubble? It's now you're it's probably like $400 right. Hundred dollars. I mean. Now. I'll, Really? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's, that's a lot of money, guys. I don't I really want to do that. <laughs> it was like yeah. Five to one hundred fifteen when I went to buy them. So I guess. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, they're, next they're time, next time you buy tickets, you have to tell me because I do not <laughs> remember. They're still on sale. There's just no lower bowl. All of them are upper bowl. Hey, hold, hold up, League right Dead. Now. Yeah. League Dead, C- yeah. come to the uh, World Semis with me in Atlanta. Oh, that's not that far from me. That's not that far. I think it's only like five I, hours. Also, I'm come, going. Come to come to SF as well. Come to SF. I'm, I'm going down. SF. I I'm going to SF. Guys. Down. Okay. All right, I guys. I don't know Kevin. if I can get there. Well, hey, look, look. We'll talk about it uh, after the after the show because I I yeah, really yeah. do want to make this happen. We keep talking about it and teasing it, but gotta make this happen. Daggon it. <laughs> We've got to meet yes. all meet in person at the same time. Yeah. Then our full Live force. Podcast. Our full force. Would I haven't be... met any of you yet, so. <laughs> yes, that true. is true. That is true. Uh, met, actually, met, Mitchell met is the too. connecting point. Yeah, he's met yeah, yeah. me and Kevin. Well, all right, uh, that we'll make that happen for sure. Uh, but I do want to kind of because you mentioned FlyQuest CLG, and funnily enough, the title of this episode is "Can CLG Make an Argument for Third? And technically, on paper, I don't know how tiebreakers are working or anything, but technically, if you just look at records. They are tied for third right now with Team Liquid and C9. And we don't have to dive in too much into this, but just your quick thoughts because CLG, you know, first of all, they surprised us by starting off hot, dropped off a little bit, and we're like, yep, there goes CLG, you know, down to the bottom. But they're bouncing back up too well, right? They did beat teams that they quote-unquote should beat, but hey, that's the mark of a good team. You beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Um, And so right now they're in third. So can... They make an argument to actually be a legit third when this is all said and done. Uh, at their current power level, they could make an argument. The problem is that the other third they're contesting with beat them the first time around. They haven't faced the second time. So we won't well, know there's until two then. teams they're contending third with. Uh, no, no, not, Steve, not uh, in terms of standings. I'm talking about power oh. power levels. So I would okay. say C9 oh, okay. is probably on the up and up, right? Well, Liquid's sure. just like... They're there. They're somehow still third, but like, mm-hmm. do they feel like a third place contender? Uh, not yet, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that CLG versus C9 wise, they, C9 has the head to head. CLG just personally, they have the right mentality on how to play, but I just don't think there's enough firepower. So I think they're like fourth or fifth, mm-hmm. just because like they, when they play well, they can beat the teams lower than them. They can even beat like Liquid last week, sure, but they. There, there really isn't enough firepower. That's like the thing. Like Palfox, the problem with their teams, like if you're gonna build this team, I think Palfox has to be like really important for their games, and like he can do really well or really kind of in is how I would describe it mm-hmm. at times. Him and Blaze kind of take turns, but I think he's been more um, consistent recently. I just don't, I don't think Palfox is the kind of player I would like currently put as good enough to be a third place mid laner. Third place teams mid laner. Gotcha. Um, that makes maybe sense. I'm just getting too into the name brand for Jensen, you know. So maybe I just they he might be playing better than Jensen, but I I don't really have as much confidence in him. So I don't think they're third. Okay. I mean, I, I I can understand that, but at the same time, I mean, look at how much we were flaming Abadage and his team's team is still second. This is, but he's gotten better. right. But Abadage doesn't need to yeah, carry he has that weight. Him. He has closer no, Sunday. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm I'm just making an example. I mean, I do think uh, okay. is there an argument for is there an argument for third? Yes. Like I said earlier, I think if CLG played Cloud Nine ten times, I think Cloud Nine probably wins six games, six or seven games, which is fairly close. I mean, mm-hmm. hey, we'll we'll see on Saturday, really, because they're gonna play. True. Yep. So 
would I would I personally give them like say their third place over Cloud Nine? No, I mm. would put them fourth place right now above TL and FlyQuest. But I mean, it's close. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I have a different. Actually, they play. They sorry. They play uh, Cloud Nine on Saturday and FlyQuest on Sunday. Oh, so yeah, so this is the test right there. This will be a big week for them. Yeah, that's gonna be a big weekend for them. Yeah, and then you know, time will tell, right? My opinion might change for next weekend after those matches, but as of this point, I don't think they have an argument for third place. I, I would still put them. Just, just in the ways that they win their games, it does feel like that it's all about contracts getting yes like just a lot of good ganks right but if he doesn't get a ton of good ganks the team just is doesn't look the same so i think that mm, if you're talking about like if they play 10 games or if they're the best of five or whatever that, that is that it's just too inconsistent of a strategy to do more than just a best of one win so um I'm going to still put them at like the fifth, sixth area. I think they're below TL. I think they're below FlyQuest and they're definitely below Cloud9. Um, I just don't think that their strategy is consistent enough. It can beat lower teams because they have a large, they just have a better team coordination gap than the lower teams. But against the other teams, right, they do reach higher and beat some of the better teams. But it's almost always off the back of just contracts, just perma ganking. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that strategy doesn't really work all the time. It's It's not like a good strategy where the only way you win is you snowball from contracts and your team collapsing on these perma ganks. Like it, I think that like, especially when the patch changes um, for next weekend and like objectives are so much more important, right? If you do mess up like one of those ganks and you like, you lose a dragon or a rift herald, like, man, I, I don't know. Seal G's does feel like the type of team that they start to get snowballed on. They just fall apart, right? The only team that they come back from a deficit was that really long, crazy EG game. Otherwise, it's like they steamroll and they win or they fall behind and they lose. Yeah. Um, Halifax is a great player. I do think so. Um, he went from, like, you know, academy mid laner to bottom tier LCS mid laner to easily, like, middle of the pack and above mid laner. So, I mean, his progression has been great. To say he's a top three mid laner, I mean that's giving him too much credit. Like he doesn't he doesn't have enough time. He hasn't had as many good games, right? He's had like, you know, I, I could probably count on my fingers how many actual good games he's had. But like his development is very clear. Like it's, it's impressive. It's good stuff. I think that he has a bright future. Right now though, he's still a middle of the pack, maybe slightly above mid laner. Um, but hey, next year, I mean, this guy just keeps improving. So um, yeah. So yeah, good good for them. Same same with CLG's bot lane, right? They keep improving. So anything could happen because they're so untested, but I mean it's just they're not tested yet. So Yeah, I mean, I think I really like CLG's development. I'm I'm really happy to see it, actually. Um, you know, if you just straight up look at their match history, they've they are a fifth place team. They've literally all their losses have been to EG, Hundred Thieves, Team Liquid. Cloud9 and E uh, yeah I said EG oh and FlyQuest. So technically mm-hmm. they they if that puts them in 5th cuz they lost all the top 4 teams that you, we were all are thinking and then they've beat all the bottom teams that you know are below them. So they're right in the middle of the pack. However, I would say that it's pretty close between them and FlyQuest at the moment. I I actually I mean I do think like if you do that that analogy or thing that Alistair was doing if they played 10 times, you know, I think FlyQuest edges them uh edges them out. But uh, I don't know. Like, I, I could see, you know, I, I see a world where they, they edge out FlyQuest for fourth place, you know, at the end of the regular season. Um, I don't think that's too out of the ordinary. I do agree with you about contracts, though. Uh, in fact, I was listening to JLXP, and I think, you know, how contracts is known to just randomly die in the enemy's jungler because he's always thinking he's got more damage and can, can 1v1 anyone. Well, he did have, like, the highest deaths i think out of all players last split and almost set a record um but this split he's actually have that number so he's not inting uh you know not nearly as much um but i also wanted to shout out his poppy because i thought his poppy was pretty insane uh he found so many hex flash angles and he was being even being interviewed and saying that you know that's why he loves poppy because he can do those types of things but i will say he was super behind uh and if those ganks had not worked I don't know if they would have won, won, you know, won that game because um, he was everywhere but his jungle. So yeah. I, I do think that's going to be a problem that, you know, as you were talking, I was like, maybe maybe FlyQuest does beat them. But 
you know, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they don't ban Poppy and he just pops off on him. And, and that's the world that happens where CLG actually gets fourth, uh, which I think would be crazy. I will give him credit. Uh, this is like probably the first time in, within an organization in a while, at least, that they just blew up everything. Like, got, got rid mm -hmm. of all the staff that didn't work, right? Was like part of that 10th place, like CLG meme, right? Yep. And they proved that it can work, even for an organization as decrepit as CLG. Like, just because you replace everyone doesn't mean that the people you're getting are like are the best of the best, right? Not all the most premium, most sought after <laughs> coaching talent and support staff mm -hmm. talent wants to go to CLG if they have a choice, right? So they didn't even necessarily get the best, and they were able to, at least in the short term, you know, really see huge improvements. Um, and they added Doko, sure, but that's crazy. Um, so I hope that that means more orgs aren't going to sit on their butts and just keep the same like. Not just like one or two people in their coaching staff, like be willing to blow up more of it if it really has shown a cycle of not working. Because like you hear a lot about like just people stealing paychecks in the in the support and coaching staff, and like we can't see it, right? Which is frustrating. But I'm sure the Oryx behind the scene can be to see CLG and like, okay, if CLG can manage this, we as <coughs> TSM or we as whatever can do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, re respect to CLG. Like, I love that they kept with this roster. I just yeah, love for it sure. so much. It's so dope. Like, last year when they had that really underwhelming roster with, like, Finn, Broxa, and, like, just a bunch of, like, high-paid mid-tier players, and they just ended, like, what, 7th, 8th, or something turtle. terrible. They had Turtle, right? But it's, like, <sighs> a lot of these guys are just, like, I don't know why you guys busting out so much money for such mediocre performances, right? And then... <laughs> yeah. Here we have a third of the budget, maybe. I have no idea what the numbers are, but twice the amount of performance, twice the amount of potential that CLG's memed always before. So, I mean, yeah. I, I just love what they're doing. I love the shift. So, good, good for them. It's great, great for the league as well. I mean, mm -hmm. what they did, what they should, right? They, they took players who might not be the best right now, but they're like, they're here to learn. They're here to get better. Like, yep. Luger was nobody, and now he's probably top 580 carrying the league right now, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good in general. Yeah, he, for he, sure. he was a no one, and now like people are talking about him. Like I think he's going to be here for a while, and that's big. You, like no, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just think that like what what you're saying is is exactly right. Like this style of like building winning teams. Um, the, I feel like there's a hopefully there's a shift changing where what the meta is for building win and winning teams. Because in the NBA for a little bit it was super teams, and that was so annoying. And it, for those of you who aren't familiar in the NBA, super teams are when basically franchise players who could have their own team they all team up and go on the same team they take salary cuts and whatever just to form this incredible super team just to win a ring and then you know that's it instead of building a young team and winning it through homegrown you know home growing your talent um and so what we're seeing with clg and even with eg to an extent even though they have some vets they also have new talent which the old meta i felt was like buy the best you know what I mean? Like buy the best, import the best, you know, and that's kind of been NA. That's kind of what Team Liquid is, right? Like right now, right? Kind of so what C9 is too, yeah. C9, C9 yeah. Gel, so same boom, boom, that's boom, been yeah. kind of quote unquote the meta for winning championships. But with EG winning, you know, and maybe now with, uh, you know, CLG developing and, you know, maybe we even speculated with TSM, like, you know, maybe they'll get uh, some veterans to match up with their rookies, right? Kind of this whole mix and match veteran rookie thing to build a team following eg's model like there may be different ways to win and i'd love to see if we actually develop talent which is something we've been talking about for years as fans in north america is they'll develop our our players and maybe they're finally doing it maybe it's finally working Look, or am i just players who have potential they, yeah they just yeah. They, they need people to take the risk on them exactly like, just take the chance that's what needs to happen and a lot of orgs aren't willing to do that and that's what cloud nine was credited with for so long building up these players but then they stopped because they they wanted they were just like throwing out money at perks at Sven yeah. mythy oh yeah. no that was sorry yeah. that was tsm Still, yes like, that was tsm Sven, yeah they, you know yeah, they, 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 they started for paying Sven. for players instead of like developing mm -hmm. them yeah. the fudge was a nobody fudge was fudge yeah. nobody for most Oh, so yeah. Now look at him. Exactly. True. Fudge is their one guy that's a nobody. Uh, Berserker, though, I mean, he was kind of like green and rookie-ish, but like, I don't know if he was a nobody. Everybody yeah. thought he was going to replace <laughs> Gumayushi, so that that's a bit of a unique one. I mean, 
Honestly, I am not complaining. I'm so glad we got that guy. <laughs> yeah. I think T1 I'm, wants Berserker back. I, I, no. I actually would not They're even like be They're like looking surprised. at the refund and like, what's the refund policy on this? <laughs> yeah, I would not even be surprised. Like, imagine oh. Berserker Karia, man. That sounds Ugh. like the best bot lane in the freaking universe. Like, oh my goodness. Okay, Gallo Ming, I mean, they're probably still the best, but... Um, yeah. But it would yeah. at least be good in a different way, right? Like, yeah, it would yeah. still be yeah. super scary. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, like, sure. I just want to say, though, guys, like, I actually think we're here. It's not like we want these orgs to do it and, like, some of them do it. I think, actually, the majority of the orgs right yeah. now, besides 100 Thieves, C9, and TL, are all developing talent, uh, new talent, right? We, we look at FlyQuest. We look at CLG. We look at EG. We look at TSM. We look at, um, okay, not Golden Guardians, but we look at um, Dignitas. <laughs> immortals right all of them are actually developing talent that's i just listed six teams or seven teams right there mm -hmm. in our league all of them developing new talent um yeah paired with some veterans or paired with some relatively green people whatever it is we're here guys we did it like we complained and we're actually at the just we arrived yeah um, but to be fair i think they were kind of forced to do that because they didn't have the money like some of these top teams like maybe you know but yeah. I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, but what yeah. I'm saying is what's shifted is that that could be the case and they could all just still suck and these top four could still be the top four. But that's not what's happening. We're yeah, seeing developing yeah. uh, team organizations that are developing players winning, which is wh where I think th that's why it's important because it changes the paradigm of, you know, the modern top East or top league cultures, right? Like of just this import by the best talent you know, win now mentality. It's like actually showing that, no, wait, it might be more beneficial to build your brand through developing players who then are loyal to your organization. You have franchise players. You could build a brand around the name, you know, jerseys, that sort of thing, um, and develop success. Because Evil Geniuses right now is on fire, man. They got so many fans, you know what I mean? Like, um, and that, so it's exciting to see is all I'm saying. And I and I think um, maybe they were... For Forced because they didn't have money, so they had to develop. But hey, good for them. Look, it's kind of like showing showing what they can do. But yeah, um, I mean, and you see what money does to you, right? Okay, Team Liquid yeah. obviously has a lot of money, but then you look at Golden Guardians. Like they got a lot of money too, and yeah. they have four top-notch veterans. They look like straight booty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> Golden right. Golden Guardians actually looks terrible. Bad. They yeah. look like the worst team in the league. Actually, I would, they I would do. put them under. Like, I mean, Dignitas is obviously worse because, but like, just comparatively, yeah. four veterans and then a Blaze Olive who's like fairly green versus actual an academy team plus Biofrost. It's like, th is there actually even that much of a skill difference between these two teams? Right. There isn't, but yeah. there is such a massive disparity in experience. That's a bummer, yeah. man. Yep. That's a bummer. I, I will say, normally, I would agree with your argument, League Dad, about like not having money, but this is the year most orcs have the most money possible. Mm. Like, because it's the NA Worlds here. Like it doesn't. It wasn't just Liquid that got an influx of money. Like, like why is Golden Guardians trying to do four veterans and Blaze Olive? Which, like on paper, is a good idea, right? Blaze Olive is a pretty good prospect as yeah. far as NA mids go. Uh, it's because this is an important year. Like everyone has a chance to make mm -hmm. probably the third slot. The third slot's up up for grabs. Like at the beginning yep. of the season, it was, everyone thought it was Liquid C9 and then whoever. Now it's actually EG 100 Thieves and whoever. Yeah. Uh, but still, like there is a chance and this is the year you get the most sponsorship push, right? Because what's the point? Uh, you you literally have another activation on the horizon. So teams that are in the top six, right, will spend more. And the fact that so many are trying out one to two rookies, like the fact that we can have a rookie of the year or rookie of the split award, that makes me so happy. There was definitely right. a season or two where we were just like, there, there's one rookie. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we can't say anything. <laughs> there's we, one rookie. He can't yeah. win by default. Yeah. It was actually yeah. awful. So. Yeah. Okay. I well, uh, fudge? I, yeah. I think, yeah, I yeah, think so, right? <laughs> Technically, good right? Good job. No, no. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, we got to move on, guys, because we've been spending, we, we talked a lot about LCS, which I love because there is a lot to talk about. Uh, but I also want to squeeze in this patch. Because uh, it's a big one. Uh, yeah. This is basically the the base of what they say will be the world's patch. Um, and so from here, uh, they will make smaller tweaks in future patches until we get to worlds. But this will be kind of be the foundational patch. Um, and I did hear on uh, the dive, they talked a lot about this. I think they had uh, one of the Immortals coach coaches on there. It was really good insight and perspective into a lot of these changes um and so there's a lot going on we won't go over all of it because you know you can read those or listen to other podcasts about that i basically want to get your thoughts 
on the changes. And so we'll talk about some of the big ones, like some like potions were changed. Uh, a lot of the the green runes have changed as far as like conditioning and bone plating uh, items. Healing has changed uh, a lot of the enchanters. So a lot of this healing that we're seeing is is going down. And then, of course, champion nerfs. Uh, but overall, I think systematically, dragons, the earlier ones are going to count for something now. They give better stats. Uh, they want to make, they want to have more fights early on. Like, uh, they don't just want people to give up drag and prioritize Rift, like, automatically. Um, I think they, there's a lot of things. So, I, you know, like I said, won't go into depth about all of those changes. Definitely check those out uh, for yourself in the patch notes. But wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, what do you think will be the, I guess, the most impactful change? Or what do you like? What do you not like uh, in this direction? They finally touched GP. For the uh, yeah. love of God. I have been complaining about this character since his buff. Since before Everyone his buff, has. too. And, yeah. and I was just like, <laughs> he's not as strong as what they said in that patch note. And I'm like, you're kidding. At all levels of play, basically, he's good. Even if you don't know how to use the barrels, he's good. Uh, just, the nerf is yeah. huge to him. He lost 40 base health. He does get health growth, so like it does catch up after that. But he lost four base armor, which is a lot in top lane. And then his parlay uh, does less damage early and more 10 more damage late. And his powder keg got hit as well. Um, so eh, I, I, I'm glad it finally happened. I don't get why there was even a few compensation buffs across uh, some of the things for the late game. I don't. He doesn't need it. Uh, I think GP needs to go into the dirt, but I'm glad he was touched. Uh, I'm glad Nara was touched as long with him. And so top lane's got some big hits. And that, those were the ones that I was really excited about. Like, I'm just so sick of that shit. I'm sick of watching <laughs> it. I'm sick of I can tell, playing man. against it in ARIM specifically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh so God. GP's so busted. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's so busted. Uh, they did nerf Sunfire Aegis, which will kind of mess up some of the soul Q builds, like the um, later game Diana. Uh, with Sunfire and Nash's yeah, is the a lot worse. It's still broken, guys. It's still no, broken, even sure, but it's still... It's, it's, so, it's, it's absolutely broken. Yeah. <laughs> not every uh, game. But yeah, uh, yeah. The potions nerf, though, I do want to yeah, talk about really it. The potions and the cool. green tree nerf. I think green tree's been strong for a while. Like, everyone's, like, in on the Rift likes to take, like, Resolve Secondary, right? For a reason. Because they nerfed mm -hmm. Inspiration, so, like, I guess, where do we go next? The next broken is Resolve. And they're nerfing that, too. So you can't just randomly take, like, well, bone planes 10 more seconds all these things are like nerfed you can read the patch notes the health pods change i think is a little weird to me i never really played the game thinking the red pot was broken i do think refillable and corrupting the nurse are warranted but i was like red pot is like 50 gold and you just lose it after you spend it why are you nerfing that so mm -hmm. i thought they could have been more nuanced about it but they're just continuing to hit sustain i think this was always the plan with uh the durability patch they just didn't want to do it all at once so people you know you trickle it in and people will complain about it you know less concentratedly yeah okay yeah makes sense what about you alistair what's your thoughts on the patch i think uh nar jarv and leblanc are back on the menu boys yeah. hmm. why, why do you say that well, Nar's already happy right on now. The menu, but yeah <laughs> Jar jarvin he's getting pretty substantial buffs uh and leblanc i mean very good early like for these fights i think she has pretty decent matchups for right now she just like didn't wasn't very strong they buffed mm -hmm. her first max ability and early early game jungler gets buffed who's ad and a early game mid laner gets buffed who builds ap i mean that's pretty good for skirmishing if they want people prioritizing dragons that's a good way to do it mm. and then nar because he's already fairly strong and he's a ranged top laner and they nerfed sustain in top lane Pretty pretty simple on that one. Yeah, that's just my guess. Okay. I don't think bot lane changes yeah. very much. I think it's pretty much the same. Um, I think um, well to touch on bot lane really quickly. I mean, they nerfed a lot of enchanters. So they nerfed every enchanter in the game actually with the uh, with the item nerf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The healing. So and they also individually nerfed Seraphine and Yumi, I believe. Yep. So and buff that, Janna. That's um that's they buff Janna. Well, that's solo like queue. They we're not gonna see Janna in pro play. I don't think players just for some reason don't want to play it. It's actually, I feel like that champ is always broken, uh, but no one wants to learn it, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But so we might, we're definitely going to just see, I think, engage champions almost every game now uh, after these buffs. And it's just, all right, Core GG's back on the menu, hopefully. Right? Like, so it's going to be a lot of engaged champions in bot lane. I don't, I don't think, Yumi and Seraphine are still going to see some play, 
but they're not going to be as meta defining as they have been for most of the split. Um, I still think Seraphine's broken though. Um, the potion changes as a person who does play with top lane, if you second pick or if you get first, if you first pick and you get countered in top lane, you are absolutely miserable because the only way you survived bad matchups in top lane was through abusing potions and abusing resolve tree, right? The second wind nerf is, and the uh, the potion nerfs just massively, massively change the last landscape of top lane uh, matchups. So if you if you're in solo queue and you second pick or you first pick, you're just crying, right? You just hope you don't get hard countered in top lane, uh, because yeah. it is rough up there right now, guys. Uh, it's really rough. Uh, I think for pro play, it's not gonna make as big of a difference for solo queue, but it is going to make a solid difference because we actually do see rel volatile matchups pretty frequently, right? We do see Nar, we do see Aatrox, we see Gwen, we're seeing a little bit of Jax, right? So we do see volatile matchups up there. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Renekton all of a sudden comes back. You got a pack, you got a buff a pack or two ago, and you throw in sustained nerfs, right? Renekton mm -hmm. is just going to start one-shotting people again. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing him again. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing Jace again because he loves to harass people down. Um, he doesn't care as much about pots. He starts Dorn, Dorn's blade. So um, a lot of these early matchups can be a big deal. I think the also a big deal with GP is that even though he actually gets a bit more big stats uh, once he reaches level five ish, his first four levels are significantly weaker, and you don't auto win level one trades against most champions of the game, um, which is a really big deal because it, it drove so much lane pressure that you constantly had the push, and then you could get an easy Sheen recall. Azale touched this on the dive if you want to hear more about it, but that's mm -hmm. a really big deal for GP. Uh, and then finally, um, the the dragon changes. Those are the big things that we, uh, none of us have covered yet, so I'll talk about those. The dragon changes, I think, were really, really big. Yeah. Um, it, so they, they wanted... Riot wanted people to fight more, right? Because the dragon gives bigger buffs, but they have more HP. So from my experience, it takes so long to kill the buff or to kill the dragon. Yeah, that it does. I would almost, I would just, you know, I 100% don't know. I don't think it's worth it to take early dragons still, because even though they lower the damage and they increase the reward, it takes so long to kill that you can, even if you kill the enemy bot lane, they just revive and they come kill you while you're still on the dragon now yeah you won't take it in time uh, before they you don't take it in time yeah. unless you're like a specific the early champion, dragons like, are like... the same the first two are the same Wait, it's only um, once the rift transforms that they're tankier really is it yeah yeah okay no um health pre-rift oh it is huh okay well i don't know what i'm doing then i guess i'm not playing good good champions that take drag but i feel like it is taking forever for me to do anything down there i tried taking more early drags effect. early on oh, maybe no, it was a place they, are, they are they are tankier they are tankier they're early. they're it's way not, tankier like... post rip they're not at, they're they're still tankier pre-rip but it's only plus 800 versus plus 2600 oh, so it's, okay. it's a huge difference okay um, and then they also have different scaling per level but it, it, they are tankier mitchell you're not crazy but they are super okay i'm not crazy tanky after <laughs> yeah they're, they're, super but tanky they're not, not crazy it. Yeah, yeah, but I do think if you're not a champion that's good at taking dragon, like it's just not worth it, right? If you're not like an Olaf or like a Viego or I don't know an Udi or something, it, it doesn't really feel worth it. It takes so long. Like if you're Wukong or something, dude, you just you don't kill that dragon, man. <laughs> like it just takes forever. I do think that if their goal was to focus more on dragons over Rift Heralds, they desperately failed. The 200 gold on killing Rift Herald is so stupidly were broken i think rift hell is going to be the biggest main objective of pro play at all it already is but it's going to be even yeah. more important right if you have a winning top side or if you have a mid lane with push or you have a bot lane with push that could rotate like you and you, you take early rifts um it had it gives more gold and then if you if you normally if you take the first rift tempo you keep tempo advantage for a long time for like the next 10 15 minutes for most pro play and you get the second rift herald which now has almost double the hp I just think Rift is OP now. Top lane I, is definitely back in the game. I Rift wonder. Rift is already OP. It was, Rift is already OP. The first hero was now. OP. I think the second one was arguably OP, especially in pro play. It depends on the timing. In solo yeah. queue, it was always good because it's so easy to snowball multiple towers. Uh, yeah. But in pro play, it was kind of useless, the second hero. But now the second hero yeah, is like was. also very strong. 75% more you can health can keep on that thing. Oh. Yeah. 75% yes. so more health is massive. And if you can keep tempo, so I, I, I think like the game gets really snowball-y 
if you can incorporate it correctly. You don't give you don't care about drags. You focus everything on getting herald. So your comp is based around herald, and you take the first herald. You get the gold advantage and the tempo advantage that you already had before, and you snowball into the second herald. Oh my god, your gold advantage just balloons into ridiculous amounts of like money. It's just. Uh, you're just annihilating towers and you have so well, see, much tempo. Th this is what I would like to, you know, because they did talk about like, you know, and I think even Fudge or no, it was it Lorlo. So I think Lorlo made a tweet and was, you know, talking about top lane, how there's always the meme that tops an island, top doesn't really matter. Top doesn't get involved. It's like four on four plus a top laner kind of doing something. Right. And so yeah. it's always been kind of this thing. How do we get top laners involved? Right. Well, you know, Rift Herald is a strong priority. A lot of teams uh, choose to prioritize that over early drags because they'd rather have the early gold, like you said, a snowball. And with them buffing it even more, I wonder if now top lane, you know, becomes super relevant in a sense that uh, maybe they pick lane dominant top laner so that they can keep this advantage, get this, get the snow piling on, and maybe even dominant uh, mid laners like uh, who can. Basically, shove and roam, or you know, maybe a LeBlanc who you know can can roam to these early fights, like really strong, right? Uh, because, as you mentioned, um, bot lane is more scaling anyways, right? Like they they don't really need to to do anything, just farm and be safe, right? Uh, and I can even see the supports just leaving the bot laners on their own island just to because it's not really it's not really going to be as important if if this plays out correctly, right? Like if the stats actually don't make a difference with the dragon, or if it's too healthy to try to take and nobody's really even taking it um then rift becomes yeah you're right the very most important objective and i would then love to see if teams adapt to that and draft like you said a around this and pick lane dominant tops and mids or or lane dominant or or excuse me like strong skirmishing junglers with uh lane dominant top laners right to to really focus that area and as you said, let them carry. And then for late game, you have your bot lane. You have your bot lane Jinx. You have your bot lane, you know, Scaler to basically your Felios yeah. to do the damage. I will, I will say for the dragon's sake, they did buff each individual dragon's buff um, yep. per dragon. So, And I will say, because I've been being gaslit by Riot for years <laughs> on years, Clown Dragon is the worst dragon. And that's why their yeah. buff was so much bigger. Mm -hmm. Every other dragon across the board was raised by 50% effectiveness. For example, Inferno went from 4% AP and AD to 6%. And it's the same for Mountain and Ocean and uh, Hextech. It was 50% across the board. Cloud Dragon went from 3.5% uh, slow resist and out of, speed, out of combat move speed to 7%. It doubled. And the soul <laughs> got buffed. From 10% yeah. bonus move speed and 50% bonus move speed out of uh, when you cast an ult to 15% bonus move speed and 50% bonus when you cast an ult for 6 seconds. That's gonna be fun. You can't gaslight us anymore about it being as <laughs> yeah. good as the other ones. Right? Blah, blah, blah. I don't movie, care, right? Man. You literally know. gave it. So boring. <laughs> you gave it yeah. so much more of a buff than anything else, and like it might still not be OP. I don't know, but I'm just I, so yeah. sick of reading those like stupid stat threads. Like, oh, it's like the same win rate. Like, freak will like smugly say on cast, like it's just the same win rate. Like, you guys just like, can't tell. And then yeah. they just give it double the buff and then a soul buff, which no other dragon got. And I was like, okay, guys, really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you think I wouldn't catch that? Yeah. I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, so I, much I do gaslighting from Riot sometimes. Jesus. Well, they, they, yeah, they're a company. That's, yeah, yeah it, definitely. I, I agree 100%. Like, Cloud <laughs> Dragon is, I don't, I mean, it, maybe it's like secretly, passively just really good and no one notices it. Maybe they're just yeah, buffing yeah. it so you notice it more. I don't know. Yeah. I really that, doubt that it though. Every, whenever there's Cloud Soul, I'm just like, don't even take it, dude. I don't even care. I'm just gonna yeah. go push. Like, give me a tower. Like, I don't even care I mean, about cloud. Pro soul. players, like, so you just see pro teams sometimes avoid. If it's cloud, soul, they just don't care. They're like, mm -hmm. get, they, they don't care. Soul. They don't want oh, elder. It's like Wukong map. or some shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't want elder. On yeah, them. yeah. I Good don't point. know. Um, I I do think though, like, so there's the antithesis, right? So if you go all in on this Rift Herald strategy, right, and you sack the drags, that's that does end up collecting the constellation drags right and you do obviously you're probably going to have the more scaling comp or you're probably going to have the stronger bot lane and a weaker top lane right uh for you know sort of your draft bucks as mm -hmm. maybe jat would say uh, mm -hmm. um you know i don't know maybe maybe the turtling is just better right maybe you don't care that you lose all of your turrets and maybe you don't care that you lost all the rift shells because you take dragons and they're actually powerful enough to pair with your scaling comp hey you're down a couple thousand gold from all that tempo but you have these dragons that make up the gold and you have your comp that makes up the, the gold 
So we're gonna see which which strategy is better. I don't know which is better. I'm yeah. you know from solo queue and from normal games, tempo and winning early is just so much better because people just give up in FF, right? So well, uh, I do. Play, yeah, you're you're right. I think yeah. you know a lot of times as support, what I've been doing lately is a lot of times going to that and telling my jungler like we're getting rift uh especially like if i'll you know because even if i just come up and show top just to shove it out and then go to rift nine times out of ten the rest of their team isn't rotating so i just haven't their support will just stay at bot lane and we have a numbers advantage uh to grab that rift and it is so easy to deflate somebody because even if your mid lane is losing you get a few plates on them, they're right back in the game, right? And, you know, that's demoralizing for the, the enemy mid laner who's like, man, I was winning my lane and now I'm I'm going to lose. Uh, so I totally uh, get that. What I'm what I'm excited about and hope that happens is what exact what you just said, uh, the diversity in strategy, because maybe, yeah, maybe we see one team that drafts heavily early game champs in top and mid lane versus teams that draft, you know, heavily, you know, aggressive early lane you know bot lane and and mid or something right to prioritize dragons which one is better right and then which one has yeah, the better late better. scaling yeah. right and and the balance of where you're putting your scalers and where you're putting kind of like your your aggressive playmaking uh champs like what roles do you stick them in depending on what what strategy you think is better that's what i'm hoping for because i think that would be super super cool uh because it's then it, it is like a variety of like okay you you took like the first three towers, maybe a couple of tier two towers, but you didn't get any of the drakes. Now the other teams got scalers. They've got the the you know the the dragon soul, and it actually makes it really competitive and harder for the snowballing team to close out. So I'm excited about that. Is there any final thoughts on the on anything uh, the patch or whatever? We've gone about an hour and a half. So uh, anything to, to wrap things up? Any final thoughts from you guys? I got one. Yeah, they finally. After six years, yeah, I nerfed this is Red coming. Smite. There it is! Uh, there it is. Oh All right. I just got finally, finally got nerfed. It took so long. It's it's great. Yeah. He's overjoyed. I, I, was, he's, he's like, I was, dude. I was, I'm bad. So sick. I'm so sick of just losing every 1v1 to any jungler because they can click me and now I do 20% reduce damage to them and burn for true damage and it has a, a soft 75 second cooldown yeah that's yeah crazy. It's such a joke <laughs> it's so broken it's and then really they also broken. have to tabby sorry. and death stance yeah yeah, yeah. It's broken for like seven years like it's actually crazy I know. how long it's been allowed to be like this as a jungle so I, sad. I, I, read it, I started i'm like there's no way it could be this strong right and then i use it, i'm like oh it's this strong yeah it's, it's like so yeah I, I you click it and say yeah i'm gonna win this i, I decided <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna win I think junglers you know are slowly get compensation buffed a little bit because a lot of their power was in the red smite. Like some junglers yeah, just don't it work was. without mm -hmm. it. No, it's true. Red smite is really broken and it did get nerfed. And it's a big deal. It is a big deal. That is, it is a massive solo queue. I don't take it anymore. Blue smite yeah. is also OP, guys. Blue smite's pretty freaking strong too. I just take that every time. It it, it doesn't have the damage reduction, but it, it does more damage actually than challenging smite um, later on. And it's instant, and you get a slow. So, and you take uh, uh, inspiration tree. So it's on a lower cooldown. So you just take blue smite. Still pretty strong. But yeah, man, I I, I avoid red smite now because I think it's still pretty strong. I just it just feels bad to take a nerf summoner. You know? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's still very strong. It's just not it is. game breaking broken like it I was. Just, I you know it's it hurts. Oh man, it hurts. Oh man, yeah, it, it needed it. It needed this. Yeah. Nerf. It's not. It needed it's not it. So did exhaust. <laughs> exhaust needed it yeah. too. I yep. exhaust was just seen everywhere all the time. Um, so those those to be nerfs, fair think, part, part to be fair part of the reason exhaust has become so popular is because how bad heal is as a summoner spell. Yeah, heal's very bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I think heal. I, I've been on the ghost eighty um, carry train for like two and a half years. Like I think that's the move. I think anything. that uh, it's honestly. Ghost in top lane might outscale TP almost. Like I don't think in pro play, but in solo queue, right? Like you can take ignite flash in top lane, but Ghost flash is gonna outscale that than the ignite. So Ghost is OP. I, um, I I've actually been saying this for a long time. Ghost ninety carry is actually sleeper. It's so good in some games. It's I think it's pretty good. I think it's like it sorry, it scales insanely well. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's fine. really good. Um, the um the the rune changes. I think um. One of the big ones, funnily enough, weirdly, is Scorch. 
Um, Scorch is surprisingly good. You chunk people. It's like an extra ability almost. It's like a, an ability hit. I mean, it's not because it's only 20 to 40 damage, but um, that, that stuff makes a difference for early trading. So I've been playing a lot of LeBlanc support, and I've been playing a lot of J4 support. And you just throw Scorch on them repeatedly uh, and just poke them down, and they get close to all-in threat, and they have their potions are weaker, their yeah. bone plating and their second wind are weaker, right? All this stuff is weaker, um, and you do slightly more damage. And then sudden impact got buffed too, right? Like these... They, you got some real kill pressure available in lane now with, uh, with yeah. Scorch and Sudden Impact buffs. So, um, I mean, MF MF be... is really fun too with it. I mean, I guess you go Comet uh, and scor uh, Scorch like that. That does yeah, a lot of Comet, poke too. You go Scorch, right? Like if mm -hmm. you're if you're going for this Rift Herald strategy, right is very clearly defined a path for you, right? You don't go Gathering Storm. You don't go mm -mm. Taste of Blood. You go all damage. You go all early game. Not all early game, right? Maybe the late game somewhere but right but you, you go like renekton j4 leblanc you, you have so much extra damage they have so much less sustain in hp and, and you just take rift herald yeah to i like it and all of a sudden you know renekton that buff on his ulti was pretty big you can't kill him because he's just too far ahead you yeah. can't kill him it doesn't matter you could be an adc who's just been farming bot lane you got three drags you don't kill the renekton he one shots you so yeah who knows who knows how the metal will go all right, cool. Any other final thoughts? Kevin, Alistair, you guys good? All right, well, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. I think we covered a lot of good stuff. Going to be interesting to see Pro Play. They do go live with this, right, this weekend, if I'm not correct, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Okay, cool. So it'll Most be interesting to talk about that next out, week. So. Yeah, I say, yeah, so I'd love... Previews are out. I can't wait to see what we have to say uh, about it after seeing uh, some LCS. So, uh, but that's going to wrap it up. Thank you again to my awesome co-host, Kevin Mitchell Alistair. Nice to have the whole gang back. But uh, until next time, guys, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace.